Hey guys, how's it going? So we're standing out here on the new property. It's actually been kind of windy today. It's a little bit still right now though. This is perfect. Like I even brought out these little stands because these dang trees kept tipping over. Um, but we are gonna be planting these three, possibly one more on the other corner. These are Spring Grove Arborvitas. They're awesome, they smell so good. And I wanna to talk to you all about this tree and why I decided to put three of them right here. But I also wanna talk about how we're irrigating out here. I've seen lots of questions about that because we're doing a lot of different stuff. I mean, right to my right, there's the orchard and the cut flower garden, which those are irrigated very differently than how we're irrigating two of the corners that we're planting fairly heavily with trees, evergreens, and shrubs. And then we'll have grass pathways throughout, which the grass will be watered differently than all of this stuff, of course. Uh, but you can see right here, this is our water supply line. I'll show you where it originates here in a minute. We decided to go with three quarter inch tubing because we are going quite a distance. So that's better than doing a half inch in this case, I think. When we get to a tree, which is the Corinthian linden, we just planted these this week and it just, it's starting to come together even though it still looks like Mars. I see that comment. It looks like you're planting on Mars and it kind of does, but we'll get there slowly but surely one tree at a time. Anyway, when we get to a tree, we uh, tap into it with a quarter inch coupler. We run quarter inch black poly. And then there's a T here where we connect a piece of this quarter inch brown drip tubing that has emitter holes every six inches. The reason why we decided to do this route as opposed to like spidering off and doing, you know, three individual emitters or four or whatever, is I feel like this is a really easy way to get excellent coverage. You can see all the way around that root ball, it's nice and moist. Um, and we could attain that with the individual emitters, but you'd have to place them just so it took more supplies. And this way, it's just been a little bit easier for us. So the water originates over here. Let's head over and I will explain kind of how we tapped into main water. I say we like I did it, but how the, <laughs> the guys did it. Okay, so our main water line actually runs about right here. So um, they tapped into the main water line, brought up a supply right here and it, goes into four separate zones. So you can see right here, this is where we have access to the zone. So we have three open zones that we can tap into for whatever. Like if we, the high tunnels are right in front of me here, which are just full of plants that we're using for projects. If we wanna set all of those up on drip, we can tap into one of these and run drip off of that. Uh, Aaron is like the king of infrastructure and making sure that we have the ability to do whatever we want in the future. Like while we have the trench open, let's just make sure that we have zone access all over the place, which is really nice. So I have no plans to use these at the moment, but this is where we tapped in for that area over there. So it comes up with a one inch line. We have a 90 degree elbow here that fits over the top of that pipe, the supply pipe. And then it has a female three quarter inch thread on the inside. Then we have this blue piece here that has a three quarter inch male that just screws in there. And then it has a three quarter inch barb where the tubing fits over it and it's really important to use these crimpers as well. So that's kind of the configuration on how we access the water. And then Aaron can, you can control it from your phone, right? Yeah, he says he can control it from his phone. I don't have mine set up to do it yet. Usually if I see something dry, just text Aaron, like this tree looks dry, can you make sure the water's going? Um, so anyway, that's how the water is set up and that's how we're gonna do it in all the corners. So right here, you can see that we scooted the rocks away and so we'll scoot the rocks back over the top. So you won't actually see any of this infrastructure and then it just will pop up in the flower bed right here. This is where we start all of our planting, of course. and. It'll just run on the top and we'll mulch over the top of all of it eventually. I don't know when we're gonna actually get to that because that's an awful lot of mulch. <laughs> so anyway, it'll probably just be visible for a little while yet. So let's head back to the arborvitas. Okay, so you guys know that we have a lot of North Pole arborvitas planted around our property and we use those for narrow areas because they stay three to five feet wide and they grow very tight, like 10 to 15 feet tall. Um, but spring groves grow quite a bit bigger. So 20 to 30 feet tall. 10 to 12 feet wide so there's still a fairly narrow evergreen um, because I've got other things in this area like to my left I've got a scotch pine and that one will get minimum 20 to 30 feet wide in the end um, so we really as we're planning these beds we have to make sure we're accommodating for the width of everything but 10 to 12 feet for an evergreen I feel like is still fairly narrow and you can see that this one has a very different structure this is a type of western arborvita um, and it has a more open kind of nature like a more ferny look to it they almost have like a braided look and they tend to have more deep colored, glossier foliage than other types of arborvitas and they're super fast growing. Um, so if you have a spot 
that you want to fill up like we do, these are a really good option and you don't have to start with an enormous size tree in the beginning to feel like, you know, I'm not going to have to wait 10 years for this thing to fill up the space, if, if that makes sense. Because some evergreens grow so slow and we love those evergreens too for their structure and the color they bring and all of that, but it's nice to have some that will uh, fill in quickly. So if you've got a large area where you want a covering or you want a hedge somewhere, this is a really good option if you have the space to let it get 10 to 12 feet wide. Um, they are a zone five through seven and they are deer resistant. So if you deal with deer, this is a great option. So I've got three of them here. One, two, three, kind of not in a row, but in kind of a little bit of a grouping. Um, in the end, we've got a grass walkway that's in between these flags and then another flower bed. In the end, you probably won't be able to see much of this island right in here at the bottom part but i think you'll be able to see these kind of towering above um, so i think it's going to be a really beautiful structure and texture in here and then when we're done planting these we're going to head over to the other corner because i think i've got a spot for one more so we're going to get these in the ground i brought the auger out should be pretty quick i am going to use a starter fertilizer and some land and sea compost the other thing about these uh, i think that proven winners would probably recommend that you just plant them straight in native soil uh, we have a little bit of a soil issue here, even though this variety is very adaptable to lots of different soil pH types. Um, we are trying to work on our soil incrementally. <laughs> we feel like if we can work on it around the plants we're putting in and eventually like spider out and, and handle more of this, we just can't do it all at once. So um, we do use a biotone starter fertilizer and a little bit of compost that's a little bit more acidic to help with our super high pH. Um, and you can tell it's high pH because of how light colored it is. I mean, some areas it just looks white when it's dry. So it needs a little bit of help. Anyway, so that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna get the auger, get these in the ground. got them all planted and got the drip run to all of them but I'm gonna go ahead and water the area around each one of these trees really well I'll probably water let it soak in and then water again just to make sure I'm not dealing with any air pockets around the root balls but I think that they'll be really happy out here I hope I mean it's a little bit of a question mark I guess how things are gonna do out here because they are so exposed um, they're gonna get consistent water that won't be a problem we're gonna be working on the soil but they will get all day, no mercy sun, and then they get a lot of wind out here. So until things start putting on size, getting bigger and kind of helping block each other, it's gonna be a little bit of a touch and go situation, I think. So I'm gonna get the rest of these watered and then we're gonna head over there and plant the fourth one. So here's where we put the fourth one and it's in between a uh, hopeside blue spruce which is right there a royal frost birch which has purple leaves and then an eastern red bud so i think it's going to be a really pretty grouping of plants over here and it's just so fun to start seeing these areas fill in a little bit knowing like how big these are going to all get i just like i don't want to wish away time but at the same time i'm really excited to see these things start to take on a little bit of size and maturity um, so that the space starts looking like a garden anyway that's it for today's project i hope you guys enjoyed watching these go into this space and I hope it was helpful for maybe those of you who have a spot where you want something that's fast growing that's evergreen something that's not prickly that smells good you can actually cut these and use them for holiday arrangement of course once they're a little bit bigger I'm not gonna cut on mine for probably several several years I'll let them get some good size on them but they're just a really wonderful beautiful evergreen to use in your garden so anyway thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye